Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired on October 15, the Medicare annual enrollment period will begin and run through December 7. Now, if you have original Medicare, Medigap, and a Part D plan like I do, you can ignore most of those television commercials trying to get you to switch to an Advantage plan. But don't forget to shop for your Part D prescription plan. Now, just like those Advantage plans, your Part D drug plan is underwritten by an insurer which is free to change formularies, pharmacy networks, co-pays premiums each year. So you need to shop for your best deal. But there are a few wrinkles this year and that's because Medicare Part D drug plans are changing for 2024. Stay tuned. Now, in this video, I'm going to concentrate on the big changes for 2024 in the Medicare Part D plan. Keep in mind that if you are in an original Medicare and Medigap insurance program for your medical needs, you do not need to change those policies during this annual enrollment period. This is just for Advantage plans and Part D prescription plans. Now, if you are on an Advantage plan, I would recommend that you look at the alternatives for your medical care and your prescription drug plans with the same plan finder tool that I'm going to review from Medicare.gov. Now, I'm also going to highlight the breaking news for all of us on Medicare, and that is the updated Part B premium and deductible amounts for 2024. These just came out from the Centers for Medicare and Medicare Services on October 12th. The monthly premium for Medicare Part B will be $174.70 in 2024, and that's up $9.80 from the $164.90 that we uh, spent in 2023 for our monthly premiums. Now, those are either paid monthly, paid quarterly, or deducted from your Social Security. And the annual deductible for Part B beneficiaries will go up to $240 in 2024, and that's an increase of $14 in the annual deductible of $226 that we had this year. Now, let's focus on the Part D prescription drug plans and what's changing. Now, every year, Part D insurers are required to send you this annual notice of changes. And I got mine at the end of September. And this year was a lot better than last year when my insurer tried to switch me to their most expensive plan. This year, they kept me in the Cigna Saver plan and the monthly premium will go from $13.80 a month to $16.80. But I'm not going to make my decision on just the premiums alone. As I did last year, I'm going to look at the total cost of the prescription drugs that I take today through a mail order option, my preferred way of getting prescriptions. So the maximum deductible here is going up slightly to 505 for drugs in tiers 3, 4, and 5 to 545 for those drugs. Now, my plan, like many of the plans, don't charge deductibles for their preferred generics in tier 1s and 2. Copays in those uh, uh, categories are also going up slightly, but the big change in 2024 is for those that enter the catastrophic coverage phase of their Part D prescription drug plan. This year, in 2023, they're required to pay 5% of the cost for those drugs once you reach that point. And in the coming year, they will not be charged that. Those drugs' costs will be absorbed by the Part D insurer. Now, that was one of the changes that Congress passed in 2022, which I outlined here. Now, this brief from the Kaiser Family Foundation highlighted all of the changes to Medicare Part D in 2024 and 25 under those new laws that Congress passed. And the big change in 2023 was insulin was capped at $35 a month. But most of the other changes 
are kicking in in the next few years. And in 2024, the big change is this 5% coinsurance requirement in the catastrophic phase, and that's going to be eliminated. So this report also highlights the big change next year in 2025 will be that the out-of-pocket expenses will be capped at $2,000. This, this chart and study noted that those in, uh, enrollees with brand name drugs, out-of-pocket drug costs uh, at the catastrophic threshold would fall from about $3,300 in 2024 to $2,000 next year. So for these people that hit those thresholds, it's going to be significant savings, but most of us won't. And I like this chart here, the report, that highlighted how different players are paying differently for drugs in the three years, the current year in 2023, 24, and then in 25. In 25, this coverage gap will disappear. That's the donut hole. In the current year, enrollees have to pay 100% of the deductible, 25% of the cost in their initial coverage phase, and then when they go into that donut hole, 25% of the cost there. And then if they hit the catastrophics, 5%. In 2024, they will have to pay 100% of the deductible, 25% of the initial coverage, 25% of the coverage gap, donut hole, but then no 5% coinsurance at the catastrophic level. But in 2025, they'll only have to pay 100% of the deductible and then 25% in the initial coverage phase. It, there won't be a donut hole. It'll all be either initial coverage phase and catastrophic coverage. But the players change. The insurers themselves go from in 2024, paying 20% of the cost at catastrophic, uh, where they only pay 15% now, uh, the, the insured paid the other 5%. 80% of it is covered by Medicare. That means all of us. In the coverage gap, the uh, drug plans have to pay 5% in that donut hole. Um, uh, where uh, in 2025, they'll have to pay about 65% in the initial coverage phase, down from the 75% that they're paying here. And then drug manufacturers are kicking in uh, a share. But if you look at 2025 and see, and you'll see that it's coming from the insurers, and they're going to get it from higher premiums. The other important change in 2024 to realize is that the uh, big announcement was made that they've selected 10 drugs that the government is going to negotiate prices on those drugs. But keep in mind, that will not come into effect until 2026. So these aren't really going to kick in in this coming year. I am going to use one of the drugs on this list of the 10 uh, which is widely used in Medicare, according to uh, this study by uh, Kaiser Family Foundation. And I'm going to use this Exrelto, ex the blood thinner. And I'm going to throw that into my mix when I'm shopping for uh, drugs just to see what it would look like for somebody who might hit these levels in the coming year. Now, in all my searching, I went out there to try to figure out how many people will really be affected. Now, the only thing I could find was this research report from the Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation of HHS. And it was all about how much money they were saving with the Inflation Reduction Act redesign of the Part D plans. And you got to dig to find the savings. Deep into the report, there's like 12 page uh, pages down that go through the demographic characteristics of the Part D non-low-income subsidy enrollees uh, by coverage phase, how many people actually hit each cover coverage phase. At the total level of the 38 million uh, that are in the uh, Part D plans that don't get sub subsidies, 
there's 6.2 million that hit the deductible phase, 25.2 that only hit the initial coverage phase, only 5.2 million hit the gap, the donut hole, and only 1.5 million hit the catastrophic coverage phase. Now here's another way of looking at that table from the HHS in issue brief that I showed you there. Of the 2022 enrollees in Part D coverage without low income subsidies, 16% never spent more than the annual deductible. 66% stayed within that initial coverage phase. Only 14% entered the infamous donut hole and only 4% reached the catastrophic phase coverage. So those 4% of enrollees will be pleased that they will no longer have to bear the 5% of the costs for prescription drugs when they reach that level. But for most of us, we won't spend that much on drugs. So the best that we can do is to shop for the total costs of premiums and drugs that we take and make the best choice. CMS also reported that Medicare Advantage and the prescription drug plans will largely remain stable in 2024 with those few exceptions that I've talked about, the 5% coinsurance at the catastrophic level and a slight increase in the support for uh, low income subsidies for the plans. But most of the rest, you're on your own to find the best plan for you. Now, I'm going to go in, as I did last year, and show you a retiree close to me, different drugs, different zip code, but let's use the same sample to show you how to use the plan finder to find your best bargain for a Part D plan. And you do that by hitting the preview. Now, starting uh, on the 15th, you'll be able to go into the open enrollment. It's best if you'll log in up here into your own account with your own drugs already saved, but I'm going to preview. And I'm going to preview without logging in, and I'm looking for coverage for 2024. And I'm gonna enter a nearby zip code, not mine, and I'm only shopping for a Medicare drug plan D. And again, you don't need to shop for your Medigap coverage if it's already in force. There is medical underwriting when you change your Medigap policies. If you're comfortable with who you picked originally, and you should be, stick with them. If you're not in the low income support and get extra help, uh, you can say, no, I don't get any of those helps. And I want to use the drugs that I'm currently using or this sample senior is using. So I'm going to say yes and then I'm gonna select those drugs. You wanna make sure that you use mail order prescription amounts and frequency if that's the way you want your drugs delivered. These three drugs that I used last year include two very generic uh, tier one drugs and one that is likely to be a non-preferred uh, drug and that is this one here. And that's the Zetia uh, equivalent here. Um, I'm going to use these three, and I'm going to first shop for these. And again, you want to be done adding drugs, and then you're going to look for the prescriptions, and you're going to find them. And you're going to add the pharmacy mail order, and then select the, the folks that you use nearby. And so I'm going to pick those, and uh, maybe Walgreens as uh, the third choice, and I'm going to be done. And that you're going to want to make sure that you select the lowest drug plus premium cost. And in this marketplace for these three drugs, this one at $390 or $417.60 for the Cigna Saver. So Mutual of Omaha would be a better buy for this test subject. And if you notice that the deductible uh, is 545, 
545. They're both charging the maximum deductible next year. But then if you look at this, you'll see that your total cost won't hit the deductible. And you can actually view that over here, view drugs and their costs, and it'll load that uh, here your networks, your mail order is your preferred network, and it's going to look at the costs over here and show you that um, you won't meet the deductible in 2024 and you won't enter the, the donut hole, the coverage gap in 2024. So you can use these if you are on pricier drugs to pick the best plans and understand how the coverage will apply in 2024. Now I'm gonna go back and go to the drugs and I'm gonna add another drug and I'm gonna uh, add one of those uh, expensive drugs, the Exeltro, uh, the blood thinner. I'm gonna add that. Xarelto, I guess that's what it is, but it's one of those 10 that they're trying to negotiate prices add this expensive drug to see what happens when uh, you're shopping. I'm going to say they're on a maintenance uh, dose of this, and I'm going to say it's once a day, um, and we're going to select the 90 quantity for three months to throw it in there and see what it does to the costs. And it's going to shop. Now again, in this case, with the added expensive drugs, it's going to change. You're going to go for the total lowest drug and premium cost for the year. And you're gonna select, these are pretty expensive when you add that expensive drug in there, but you're gonna make sure you look at the mail order pharmacy price for things if that's the way you want to receive it. And here, it's going to be 1746. You're gonna definitely go through the deductible. And you can see that uh, AARP is more expensive, Mutual is a little bit more expensive than that. Um, and let's go back up to the clear spring health value plan and see the drugs and their costs under this plan to understand how the levels will work. And here you can see that the mail order, you're going to pay nearly nothing for the uh, Torvastin and the uh, even the uh, ez ezetimidabide. Um, but you're gonna spend a lot on this Zelrelto drug. And your yearly drug cost is gonna be $14.54. Um, but consider that, that you're still gonna be in the coverage gap. And it'll show you here, you won't get out of the coverage gap in 2024. You're likely to enter it in October. You'll meet your deductible almost immediately in the plan with these drugs. That gives you a sense of how you, the coverage effects will, will happen uh, in those phases. And keep in mind in 2025, that donut hole will disappear and you'll have coverage and then catastrophic coverage. Hey, please like and subscribe to this channel if you like entertaining ideas from a DIY retiree. I'm not selling a course. I'm simply here to share my perspectives to help you prepare for your own DIY retirement. I will conclude with my standard warning. I have no initials after my name, so take these as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. Always do your own due diligence and seek out a professional if you need one.